and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna. We're bringing you another piece of bonus content this week. We'll be reacting to the Europa League group stage draw and, of course, looking at Unai Emery's latest press conference, which he gave around about an hour and a half ago. So the Europa League draw took place at around about midday today. Um, of course, there was always a big song and dance made of it. It was live on BT Sport. I had the pleasure of sitting and watching it today, uh, working from home. Those are the perks, of course. Now, our first opponents are Sporting Club de Portugal. They came out of pot two. That is Sporting Lisbon to us here in the UK. Looking back at last season, they finished third in Liga Noche, 10 points off of the champions FC Porto. They only lost four times in the league. Uh, finished third in their UEFA Champions League group last season behind Barcelona and Juventus. They did, though, accumulate seven points and hold Juventus to a 1-1 draw. Now, their top scorer and key player last season was Bas Dost, the Dutch forward who scored 26 goals in 29 appearances last season. You'll remember them being in the news uh, where their players were reportedly attacked by some fans who made it onto the training ground. And this did lead to a number of their players seeking termination of their contracts. Next up are FK Karabag, the champions of Azerbaijan, where, of course, the final will be held this year. Now, they won the league by 16 points last season. Top goal scorers were South African Dino and Lavu and Mahir Matadov, an Azerbaijani himself. They overcame FC Sheriff of Moldova in the final qualification round. But the big story here is the country's ban on Armenians entering, meaning Mkhitaryan's involvement is of course in doubt I just think that's unacceptable in 2018 that there's still such things going on in the world certain people based on their their ethnic origin and background can't enter countries I, I think it's ridiculous and UEFA surely 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 have to intervene UEFA were of course asked to comment and this is what they had to say on the situation it is a standard procedure for UEFA to send letters of support to associations, clubs or embassies in order to obtain visas for players in order to be able to travel to another country and play in UEFA competition matches. So basically, they didn't tell us anything. They didn't say that they're going to force the issue, only that they're going to send a letter of support. Hmm, not good enough in my opinion. And you know what? If I was Arsenal, I'd kick up a massive stink here. I'd even consider boycotting the match. Give us the points. You know, if they won't accept one of our players coming into their country, I think that's bang out of order. Our third and final opponent in Group E are a side, to be honest, I don't know very much about FC Vorskla Poltava of the Ukraine. They finished third last season and their top goal scorer is a Brazilian that goes by the name of Iuri. I know they're based in the center of Ukraine, but not much else, if I'm being honest. And uh, I hadn't actually heard of them until this season's competition. So a game we should win, but it's not the best of away trips, is it? We've got a couple of long distance trips in this group and that would be the only downside, uh, I would say, because otherwise it's a group that we should make quite light work of. It was confirmed today in Unai Emery's press conference that Reese Nelson is on his way to Hoffenheim on loan, having signed a long-term deal at Arsenal. So uh, he needs minutes, no doubt about that. He's a player who people have very, very high hopes for. And uh, whilst I agree, uh, I definitely feel that he needs to go out there and get some, some game time under his belt. And, and playing in the Bundesliga is a great place to start with Hoffenheim under a good coach, Julian Nagelsmann, a man who was linked with a Bayern Munich job. So... He's certainly an accomplished coach and, and my hope is that he can get the best out of Reese Nelson uh, during his time out there. When Unai Emery was asked about the uh, move in his press conference today, he had the following to say, it's a very big chance for him and the level there is important. We think because he is very young, he needs to take a new level to play, a new level also to take minutes, to take experience. We decided together, the club, coaches and the player, it's a good chance for him to take minutes in and play and then come back with us because I think he is signing a new contract with us. So, yeah, uh, obviously it's a decision that the club and the player and Emery have made together. Um, it's in everybody's interests. 
uh, Hoffenheim are getting a great player out of it. I'm still trying to make sense of Unai Emery's words in some of these press conferences. Like I've mentioned on previous podcasts, I, I rate him for for having the bollocks, if you like, to come out and, and speak in English straight away and, and give it his all. But I think there is a communication issue there. I'm certainly struggling uh, at certain points anyway. Now, Hoffenheim's boss, Julian Nagelsmann, believes that Reese Nelson can be a key member of his squad. He says Reese has similar traits to Serge, referring to Serge Nabry, which is his pace in one-on-one situations. These are qualities that we don't have much of in the squad. It was my wish that we replenish those qualities again. So obviously Nagelsmann is pretty happy with the, the business himself. Here's what Reese Nelson had to say on the signing of his new long-term contract. Reese, congratulations. How does it feel to sign your new deal? Um, delighted. It's been a long time coming now, so I'm just happy everything's sorted out and I can sign the contract for a great club. What was it that made you want to stay at Arsenal? Um, it's my boyhood club, so from a young age, from about eight years old, I've been supporting the club. Like I said, Sierra and Reese encouraged me as well, so ever since then I've just loved the club and fell in love with it. Of course, part of the deal sees you going out to Germany on loan for the next season. Um, yeah. How excited are you to go out there and play for Hoffenheim? Yeah, I'm very excited. They've got a great man out there as well, so I just can't wait to get on the pitch and do what I can do and show everyone what I can do. Of course, your good friend Jaden Sancho is out there. What's he told you about Bundesliga football? Uh, he said that it's very rough and very competitive, but he said I'll enjoy it, so just play my game and I'll, I'll be fine, he said. So Reese himself seems pl- pretty pleased with the move and, of course, the fact that he signed a long-term contract with Arsenal Football Club. So I'd like to wish Reese all the best and we'll be keeping an eye out on him and uh, one eye on Hoffenheim and seeing how he gets on and hopefully he can return to the Emirates a, a far more complete player. And I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's been a lot of, of talk about Reese Nelson over this past 12 months to 12 to 18 months I would say you know a lot of people saying that he deserves a place in the first team and and I understand where they're coming from I get it I I get that you want to see a young player come through and be given the opportunity but I have to say that maybe this was the best move for Reese Nelson because he hasn't yet proved himself on the Premier League stage and and perhaps it's a bit of a a big ask to just throw him into the first team. This will give him the opportunity to play in a a very competitive league with a very competitive team. Um, Let's make no mistake about that. Hoffenheim are a fantastic team who have have done brilliantly over the years and especially under this current manager. So I, I think it's the right move. I think it's the right place for him to go. It's a league that I guess you could say is the most similar to the Premier League in terms of style. Um, So, yeah, happy for Reese and and hopefully get him back a, a far more complete player. And I look forward to seeing how he develops. In other news, Unai Emery has confirmed that he has indeed banned high sugar fruit juices from the training ground. Here's what he had to say on that today during his press conference. In the newspapers this week, that fruit juice with too much sugar is is banned. Is is that is that true? Yes, is 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 true. I, I only change the. Uh, I like uh, um, I like a lot uh, the the fruit and, and uh, I like the juice fruit. But with uh, a lot of sugar, not 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 very well. It's for that so the first is uh, when I was uh, very young. Uh, my father is coming every day, uh, uh, wake up me with with one orange juice, fruit uh, fruit uh, flesh, and uh, I like uh, uh, in my life uh, more of that. It's for that when I arrive here. I only asking that for for the for, for, for the squeezed. cook, <laughs> and the play I think is the best. Is the is the, the same? I I think they they prefer the, the orange juice fresh. <laughs> you heard the man. No orange juice. No fresh juice. No fruit juice. Whatever it may be, just water. I, I guess that's the Emery way. Just to finish off, I'm going to play you another quick soundbite. This was two from today's press conference, and and this is what happens when a journalist leaves his phone on loud in front of Unai Emery. In my career, I am not stopping for, for the, the news uh, when 
when it isn't, isn't true because uh, it's, uh, it's like that, uh, this, this, this life in, the, in, this, in this world, but uh, I have the respect for you, but uh, when the, the news isn't true, isn't true. It's yours. I don't know who is the, the phone. I am going to say. John Spencer. I can I can I can answer. <laughs> okay, good morning. <laughs> oh, good afternoon. Hi, I am Unai Emery. How are you? Yeah, we are working. Yes. yes. <laughs> Excuse. Excuse, eh? I don't know. It's... <laughs> Classic from the manager. Now, I don't know who John Spencer is, but whoever you are, how dare you put the phone down on the boss? Didn't anyone teach you any manners? <laughs> that brings us to the end of another bonus podcast. Don't forget the Chronicles of Aguna is brought to you by Loserpool. Loserpool.com, a brand new betting game. Get involved, get your friends involved. Check it out. We'll be back on Tuesday with episode 24, I believe if I haven't got my numbers mixed up. Until then, ciao.